The scientific name of the long-tailed chinchilla is Langira. A habitat consists of barren, arid, rugged areas of mountain chains connecting the coastal mountain ranges and the Andes. The typical habitat is rocky or sandy with sparse cover of thorn, scrubs, few herbs and forbs, scattered cacti and patches of succulent bromelates towards the coast. It's, it's exclusively terrestrial. Prefers high altitude between 3,000 to 5,000 meters. Each individual shelters in holes and crevices in the rocks of the mountains. The niche they are hairy boars. And in the wild, their diet would consist of bland feeding of seeds, roots, leaves, fruits, berries, bark, alfalfa, and various grasses, all of which contain high percentage of fibers so they control the growth of those plants and contribute to the ecosystem. The distribution of species. The species are located and reside on the Andes, mostly the south of Andes and mostly located and distributed in Chile's Andes. This species resides in the northern Chile along the foot foothills of the Andes and coastal mountains south to Talca. Elevations from 400 to 1,600 meters. A new colony was reported from a mining company, Cerro Blanco, in 2012 in Bayanar, Atacama. Two colonies exist. The colony near La Serena and all other colonies are in Alco, 250 kilometers south of La Serena. The colony's occupancy is greater than 10 kilometers squares approximately. It is important to know that in 2000, 2008, it, they were critically endangered, however, it has returned to just being endangered, but still, it is severe. Moving on, in order for the long-tailed chinchilla to qualify as endangered species, some biological factors were taken into consideration in terms of the reproductive rates. They have low reproductive rates, as a result, they are limited, and they have two separate colonies. It has a lower um, population than the minimum viable population size for long-term survival. The female is generally monogamous, while female males are not. They live up to 10 years and if active, possibly 20 years approximately and averagely in wild, 11.2 years. Their lifespan isn't the main concern. In terms of the numbers, there are approximately 100 GTS per colony and there are only two colonies. It is a low number that keeps decreasing. When talking about distribution, they tend to be located with one, one colony or the other in the north or in the south of Talca, covering 10 kilometers squared approximately. As mentioned before, they live in separate locations, species, which separates the population as a whole and they're able to disappear from one site or the other. Niche specialis specialization consists of being herbivores and eating plants they need that, um, that require the ecosystem to thrive. Um, migratory behavior, female species are more territorial and wouldn't move much from their location of the colony they correspond to. They're very adaptive and resilient in different environments, which is positive for them. However, they don't tend to migrate far distances, barely move short distances if in activity. In terms of the feeding levels, they consume grass types due to herbivore diet and they are primary consumers in the Fuchin and Tropic levels. When dealing with the external pressures that have resulted in long-tailed chinchillas to become endangered, there are various abiotic factors, all human activities, which are the following, hunting for their fur, pet trade, mining sites are being built near their habitats. They are being kept in captivity and we create stressful environments for them to reside and result in various detrimental health symptoms. Grazing cattle and firewood extraction nearby, these animals are being abused and um, exposed to cruelty. They're, they're being cruel to them. First of all, um, one important one is hunting for their fur, which has been a constant factor. They have been hunted since the 19th century and early 20th century, and at least 300 million chinchillas were hunted during this period. Million, millions of pelts were exported between 1895 and 19th, and in the 1905 alone, 217,836 were imported into the United States from South America. South America. There are illegal activities. In terms of pet trade, hundreds of chinchillas are bred commercially for pet trade there for this purpose. They are brought for their in, from their natural habitat to reside in captivity where owners are not capable of providing with their food and proper care they require and ultimately need to survive. This is what happens since 1975. We turn this wild animal into the pet for the sole purpose of company and wanting the adorable chinchilla at your side. Also, cattle and mines located near their habitat disrupt and take away the space they live in. 
to eat and live healthy and content and free of any danger. Specifically, the mine of Chile called Cerro Blanco deprives the animal from so many needs. They graze the ca graze cattle. Grazing cattle creates disturbances in their natural environment to roam and be active as they should. The, king, the gra cattle grazing is only increasing since the demand of meat only keeps growing. As well as the firewood extraction, other sites put them in danger and limit, the, limit their environment and needs for survival, especially not to mention the abuse and cruelty they face. It is unbearable. The cases I've researched are too, far too disgusting to mention, but you can look them up. When talking about the role and activities of the intergovernmental and non-governmental organizations in preserving the species, there are local and international ones, such as the UN. They inform the animal is in danger, so the international community knows that they need to take preservation into their hands, preservation efforts in order to sustain the species and others. They inform and create awareness to the general public and the international community to work as countries together to change the earth for better. For the better, they create dialogue and efforts. They bring the possibility into planning and action based on the information collected and exposed by them. The lawmakers make their new laws and enforce them, and create regulation of, or policies to protect those in need. A local local government of Chile that created the natural reserve of four chinchillas action that had been to take to to protect them and encourage other citizens to do so. The local and international. So they are local and international, as we have seen on non-governmental and ones that are governmental. They play a role this anim on the animal's likelihood, li likelihood to survive. We all can blame one another and put more pressure on one or the other and anything, but we, all the citizens have caused all those human impacts putting them in danger. So we all have to contribute to save the animal. It is as simple as that these NGOs and governments can use their power to contribute uh, with their platforms and we support them and all join the call. In order to make the long tail chinchilla no longer endangered, we must take preservation actions into our hands. All of us from NGO to the government on lawmaking policies to make sure that the law is being enforced and to make the animals in proper con live in proper conditions, long and healthy lives without disturbances that are unnecessary due to human activities just mentioned previously. We must stop hunting for, for, for this poor and vulnerable um, animals for its fur. This is illegal to do so, yet people proceed to in doing so. We must enforce a law and impose punishment that fits the severity of the matter, which is a pris which is prison for illegal activity and for animal abuse or cruelty. We must put a stop in the unnecessary pet trade to avoid keeping them in captivity as adorable as they may they may be. They belong in the free and natural environment and keeping them in captivity or in a cage or a small artificial space where they may or may not receive all the care and food they need to survive, laws should be enacted and enforced for all of this to function and deliver the message and facts to the general public so everyone is informed of what they are doing to this poor and vulnerable animal. Living being beings that deserve to be free and live as much as you do and all of us do. There are laws to protect them and in their natural habitats, but we should all voice our concern to the NGOs NGOs as a as group of people as individuals and everyone should cooperate together to save this animal. The Convention of on International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora lists all chinchilla species in the Appendix One, making international trade in animals or other skins illegal among all all the Sino nations. Additionally, uh, the reserve such as the La Reserva Nacional de Chinchillas has been put into place and increased the number significantly. Regardless, it has endangered. It's still endangered and not critically endangered. We have to control and regulate our human activities in order to decrease drastically the impact we have in our environment and living organisms that reside there. So don't don't put or contribute to pet trade or hunting or illegal mining or cattle grazing firewood extraction located in their habitats. We must voice their rights.